coming up. Find a pot of gold at the end of your own personal rainbow. Do your eyes really tell lies about size? How to get your backyard pool table on the level. And find out who's hot with a love thermometer. You know, Dana, I think that love thermometer would say I'm pretty hot. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough, Taryn. But first, Jordan's about to find out that his backyard is not as flat as it looks. Billy and I are going to build our own outdoor pool table. First, we tape some sides on our tabletop, leaving gaps where our pockets will be. Got to have somewhere for the balls to go. We're using old flower pots. We'll put a cardboard barrier around each one. Clever design, huh? Mum gave us a sheet of felt from her sewing supplies. We've made cuts in it where the pockets are, so it fits neatly. We borrowed Uncle Arthur's real pool balls. Hope he doesn't mind. OK, let's play. Uh-oh, we have a problem. The balls roll straight to one side. The back lawn isn't level. Our table needs to be perfectly level or we can't play. Got it. Dad's spirit level shows when things are flat. Now where is it? Ah, I found it. Oops, that's right. I broke it when I used it to build a skateboard ramp. Uh, that better stay lost. What now? Why don't we build our own spirit level? Yeah. Come on, Billy boy. Hey, there's Zach. <sighs> Nicole and I both think Zach is hot stuff. But I wonder how hot he is. Let's build a love thermometer and take Zach's temperature. OK, I have a bottle of tap water here. I'll just put a few drops of food colouring in. Red for romance, of course. Now I need a drinking straw and this modelling clay. I'll shape the modelling clay around the straw. Seal it up carefully. Now that pops the top of the bottle. Press it down tight. The bottom of the straw should be a few centimetres below the water level. Now to make our temperature gauge. Put a small piece of cardboard in two and cut a few slits halfway across. Open it up and fit it over the straw like this. Now blow into the straw and forcing air into the bottle. You can see it bubbling up. When I stop blowing, the liquid rises back up the straw. Mark where it stops, Nicole. OK, that's our starting point. Oh, Zach! Can you give us a hand with this experiment? Two hands, in fact. Just hold the bottle like this. Ooh, it's suddenly so hot out here. Keep holding for a few minutes, Zach. My temperature is definitely rising. Look, Mr Hot Stuff is making the water rise. I told you Zach was hot. Blowing into the straw squashed a little extra air into the bottle. When Carrie ann stopped blowing, the increased air pressure pushed some of the liquid up the straw until the air pressure inside the bottle became the same as outside. As liquids become warmer, they expand. Body heat from Zach's hands was transferred to the liquid in the bottle. Because the top of the bottle is sealed and the gap at the top is full of air, the expanding liquid only has one place to go, up the straw. Wow, Zach, you are so hot right now. Right, time to see just how hot I am, Dana. <laughs> While Taryn does that, let's see how Jordan is getting on making a measuring device of his own. Our pool table is finished, but it's on a serious slope. Time to make a spirit level to help us get it flat. Hand me those hooks, Billy. I'm going to screw them into this flat board. One in this corner and the rest around the edge like this. Now the hose. Run a piece through each hook, kind of like a border on three sides. Now some tape to hold that in place. There. That's 
looking good. There's one more thing we need to do. A little green food colouring in some water. Mix that up. Now we fill the tube with the green goo. Got the modelling clay ready, Billy? In goes the green stuff. When the tube is full to the top of the timber, plug up the ends. There we go. Our spirit level is ready to do some surveying. We'll be playing pool in no time. <laughs> oh, an ice cream. Yum. Oh, that one's bigger. Now this one's bigger. No, wait, this one. No, that one. Here. They're both the same size. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Wait here, Michael. I'll just make some little V-shapes out of yellow pipe cleaners and attach one to each end of a red pipe cleaner, like this. I'll make another one. I've bent the yellow Vs in on one red pipe cleaner and out on another. This time, Michael won't believe his eyes. Hey, Michael, may I mess with your mind? Which red pipe cleaner is longer? The one closer to you or the one closer to me? They're both exactly the same length. Freaky, huh? Kimberly's trick works because our brain naturally compares the outline of the two similar objects. Because the yellow Vs are the only point of comparison between the two objects, our brain is fooled into thinking the one with the larger outline is larger overall. Hey, I forgot about the ice blocks. Oh, no! Michael's main mind disappear. <laughs> it was just another optical illusion. Well, I'm glad Kimberly got her ice block after all that. Let's go to the beach now where Reefa is about to make something disappear. Shells appear on our beach every day as if by magic. But I'm going to show Yumna a magic shell disappearing act. I'm going to make one of these big shells completely disappear. Now all I need is an empty coconut shell and some vinegar. Over the shell it goes, and before long it will disappear. Those little bubbles are weaving their magic spell. See, it's already broken up. But that's nothing, just watch. It's bubbling away like mad. Magic work! The shell has disappeared into thin air. Reefa's shell is made from a chemical in the seawater called calcium carbonate. The vinegar contains an acid which dissolves the calcium carbonate, releasing those bubbles of carbon dioxide gas. Eventually, all the calcium carbonate dissolves and the shell has gone. Come on, let's get some more, Yumna. There are so many shells on the beach, we can never make them all disappear. <laughs> Another sunny day, which is nice, but there's something I really like about rain. It's rainbows. I haven't seen one for ages. Maybe I can make my own rainbow. Want to help me make a rainbow? Over here in the sun. I've got a glass of water, a mirror and a sheet of white cardboard. Hold that up for me. The glass of water goes in front and the mirror goes in the water. Now, there's the sun. A bit of adjusting the angle of the mirror. We need to bounce the sun rays off the mirror onto the card. There it is. Red and yellow and green and blue. I can see a rainbow. Sunlight is actually made up of lots of different colours. When it passes through water, it bends. The colours all bend at slightly different angles, causing them to separate. This process is called refraction, 
and it's why rainbows appear when sunlight passes through a shower of rain. We can call up a rainbow whenever we want. Pity there's no pot of gold at the end of it. Well, who needs a pot of gold when you have a portable rainbow? Well, I think that pot of gold will be pretty handy, Dana. Nearly as handy as Jordan's latest invention. I've taken our spirit level to the top of a length of wood. Off with the plug so the liquid can move. Now I just line up the top of the two water levels. If I imagine a line from my eye, I cross the two water levels to the stick that Billy is holding, it'd be a perfectly level line. Move your finger up a bit, Billy. OK, down, 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 stop. There, make a mark. Now the other corner of the table. We'll make another mark where my level line meets the stick. Up a bit, Billy. There, mark it. OK, let's break out the ruler and look at the results. The bottom mark is from the ocean side of the table. The top mark is from the high side. No wonder the balls won't stay in the middle. The ground on the ocean side is nine centimetres lower. Well, we can fix that. These little timber offcuts will help. We need to raise the lower side by nine centimetres. That's more like it. This clever surveyor's level works because of the Earth's gravity. It pulls the water down to the same height in each side of the tube, no matter what angle it's at. If you look across the top of the two water heights, you get a perfectly level line. Building surveyors use this line to make sure a block of land is absolutely flat. This is a critical step before any building work can begin. Otherwise, a building might be on a lean. OK, Billy, take the rack off. Yep, all level. The only thing that's not going to be level in this game is the score. It looks like Billy's going to have a tough game when his hand's there. He sure is. But it's game over for us, because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.